queen still live? Master? Does the queen still live? In good health, sir. Aye. Aye, in good health, master. And England is all well ashore. All's well, sir. Thanks, good master. Oh, God be praised, Chaplain Fletcher, for he has delivered us from our travail. We go into Arbor then, Uncle? No, not yet. We'll anchor off St. Nicholas Island. Let them know in London that we're back. And wait to hear what they say. St. Nicholas! Aye, sir. Drake, can't be. Drake, there's no mistake in him, but Drake is dead. Wrecked and drowned in the Great South Sea. No. Drake. Tis he. much to be considered before I summon here my resurrected Captain General. Let him wait there a while till I have taken thought. Captain Drake? Captain General Drake, aye. From Her Sovereign Majesty, Queen Elizabeth. I'll wait without. She wishes to see me. The Queen. Hey, lad, the Queen. When? Forthwith, at Richmond. And to bring specimens of our voyage with me. What sort of specimens? A sword that even monarchs love to look at. A sword that might well save your uncle's head. Thank God we have them. And in right royal abundance. command. 
How long? Just now. Have you, well? No. Nothing. He has much to tell her. And much to explain. So, it is over. The circumnavigation done. I'm out. And by an Englishman West Country born, my salutations, Master Drake. And welcome home to England. Thank you, Your Majesty. Lies she still in Plymouth, the Pelican? The Golden Hind, ma'am. I renamed her for Sir Christopher Hatton. He has a hind in his crest. So he has. All considered then a most felicitous and prudent change of heart. However, lies she still in Plymouth, this pelican hind of yours? Aye, ma'am. Awaiting your command. Seaworthy still. Enough needs be to venture forth anew. Three eventful years, Master Drake. And all the seas of our globe have passed beneath your keel. John Dee was right. You are the finest mariner of all. Your holds, they say, are heavy with treasure. Exceeding heavy, ma'am. My timbers groan with wealth. Wealth beyond belief. She is, I fancy, the richest freighted argosy which ever flew our English flag. Do you know the value of what you carry? To the groat, ma'am. There lies beneath my decks enough and more to sustain your kingdom and all its needs for at least a year. A year at least. At least. Didst think, after all that's passed, that it would end this way? No, ma'am. Nor I. Three years ago, I would have prevented you, but for the urging of your champions. Sir Christopher Hatton, my old friend and advisor, and my Secretary of State, Sir Francis Walsingham, and my great cosmographer, John Dee. There is but one way, Majesty. <laughs> the way. The Spanish and the Portuguese will never expect us to take, for they themselves no longer dare to. But no Englishman has yet sailed within a thousand leagues of where that passage lies, south across the northern sea to the equinoctial line, along and below it, and down the coast of Brazil, and thence to the Straits of Magellan, through them, then up the great South Sea, there to seek the Straits of Anian, which we must discover if Spain is not to rule the world. We must do this, Your Majesty. The state hath need of it. Great need. And the leader of this expedition? There is but one, ma'am. But one. And who is this one? Drake, ma'am. Francis Drake? El Draco, the dragon? Oh, yes, ma'am. The dragon. There are those who look upon Master Drake as more a pirate than an explorer. Oh, indeed there are, ma'am. But even those who abuse him most must perforce agree that he is a most productive pirate, ma'am. Perhaps the most productive that ever put to sea. A most percipient gentleman, Sir Christopher. And now a very much richer one because of it. You've seen him since your return? Aye, ma'am. 
here in Richmond. Did he speak of Doughty? He did, ma'am. And? He understood. And forgave? I, ma'am. Knowing all? Knowing all. Was he not your closest friend on this great venture? Your companion in arms for many years? He was to me as my other hand, Your Majesty. I loved him well. I would that he were here to share our triumph. Make haste, my masters! Come on, lads, jump to it, lively now! Come on, easy, lads, easy. In ventures such as these, there is but one commander, one monarch only, when the lizard point sinks beneath the stern and all that lies ahead is unknown sea. See those barrels, Stoja! Aught else is anarchy. And Doughty sought your place. My place and then my life, Your Majesty. Our Spanish cousins are sore disgruntled, so I'm told. Your escapades have much offended them. Indeed, King Philip has asked me for your head. He has, ma'am? Yes, good Master Drake, he has. You paint exceeding well. Thank you, Your Majesty. It was here your voyage almost came to grief. The Magellan Straits. I ma'am. Uh, it very nearly did. I meant before you put to sea, Master Drake. Before you sailed from Plymouth Sound. You spoke of the Magellan Straits. I did, Your Majesty. Like mountains, are they not, the waves therein when tempests blow? Like mountains, madam. And worse than that by far. For mountains here on Earth stay fixed in place. Do not collapse and burst apart when their summits become too lofty for their base. Ship killing, mountains all bent upon destruction. And here is where you would have us send our ships. They have been tamed by mortal man, Your Majesty. And that being so, our Drake can do the same and more. Uncharted still, you say? One man alone, Magellan. And he for whom the Straits are named did truly take their measure. But even he did not return to tell the world what he had done. Then why should Drake succeed where great Magellan failed? Because Drake is preordained, Your Majesty. A mariner supreme with will of iron. Drake, the dragon, will prevail. Upon my oath, I know it. Make haste there! There are whispers from court that this voyage may be stopped. Stopped? Aye. But why? My Lord Burley hath had word of it. Burley? How so? I know not. But by the rood I shall. How fare the other ships? All ready and standing by. To thy place then. As soon as I get word, we'll straight to sea. Majesty.
Blessed they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for us. Hey, the Lord hath done great things for us already, whereof we rejoice. <laughs> I repeat, this voyage has been kept secret from me. According to my intelligence, you've known of it for some time. Not directly, Sir Christopher. Even now, not directly. By whose authority do these ships proceed? The voyage is a private venture, my Lord Burley, and needs no authority. Most private, indeed so private. I wonder that Her Majesty knew aught about it. The voyage is for trade, my lord, and our future prosperity. Do you seek to compromise Her Majesty and thus provoke the Spanish into war? I speak for the abundant wealth and triumph of this, our nation. And I speak for the security of the state. Our survival as a nation might now be at stake. The ships, I take it, are now beyond recall. Indeed they are, my lord. Then God help us all. Especially those who sanctioned this voyage. And him who leads it. The Pelican! The Pelican! The voyage and our prosperity. Aye. Didst ever think when comrades in arms in Ireland we first did voice this voyage that it would ever be? I always hope so, Thomas. But conviction lags so far astern of dreams in those days, I never dared believe it. I owe you much. Your friendship hath opened many doors to me. A right royal sesame, eh, Francis? <laughs> to advance a comrade's interest is a privilege. To advance a partner's is but prudence, too. Partners? Aye, Francis. Partners ashore, Thomas. Comrades at sea. The voyage, then. We shall do it. I know we shall. With your good help, Thomas. Yes, I shall. Master, the cask rolled dangerously in the furred old. Wherefore? The ace at Plymouth. Attend them, take what men you need. Aye, sir. That fellow has need of manners to brush me by like that. Isn't that bright? Nay, he's a true mariner and a sterling fellow. He has a task to perform, an urgent one. He shall not conduct himself so jauntily when he knows our true destination. When you go below, see that places are laid for all the gentlemen at dinner. Come, Leonard. What did he mean by that remark? About our destination? We go to Alexandria, don't we? Nay, lad, we go not there. It was but a deception for the papist spies on shore. And for the crews themselves, of course. They might have tired in Plymouth a while had they known where we are truly bound. You, sir, give a hand there. But he's a soldier, sir. He says he's one of Master Doughty's men. Master Doughty's? You are aboard my ship, sirrah. And I, Captain General Drake, am in sole command. Now fall to there, fellow. Ned, sir, put this idle fellow to work and see that he stays till all be done. He's a corporal, master. Is he indeed? Then wherever the labor's filthiest, put him to work on that. Aye, aye, sir. 
get. Veto works, sir! Go on, get down there. Get on your hands and knees. Get in there and stow that stuff as high up there as you can. Tie it up. That is one of my soldiers, Francis. A corporal. One of my men. Your men, Thomas? Yes. There are no men of yours aboard this ship, Thomas, nor in any other ship in the fleet. All who sail forth are my men. All, Thomas. All. mistake and never give it another thought, most of them. But to deceive them, deliberately deceive them, to get them to sign on, and then call them together to tell them that that's what you've done, well, if that's what he intends, he's not lacking in courage that much, I'll warrant. Any more present, Captain? All arrived and waiting? All, Master Brewer, mariners, soldiers, gentlemen, all all come. I'll be there directly. Come on, Ned. You'll tell them now, Uncle? Aye, lad, I will. Exactly where we go? Not yet a while. What I will tell them, though, is where they're not going. Which is, I fear, the very place they've all signed on for. They'll thank me later, though, I fancy. At least I hope so. They'll be trouble, do you think, when they do find out. Discord and division walk hand in hand on any long voyage. Magellan had to kill three of his captains, they say. And even Columbus. is well underway, and all is going as planned. Well done, my masters, well done. It is now meet that I tell you our true destination. Not Alexandria. Then where are we bound? I where? We go for exploration and for Spanish gold. But where? I where? And wherefore you give us falsehoods at Plymouth? Of which of us lies? We've all signed agreements for Alexandria. And we're keeping secrets till now, will not Twas necessary. And no more can I tell you for now. But this I promise. Every man on this voyage will be rewarded with treasures in abundance. Even the least of you will return a gentleman. That I promise. Oh, what seas must this cross to find these riches, Master? Oh, I, what seas? Fear not the sea or where we go. With God's good help and your best endeavors, I shall lead you to riches and glory. That's no answer. None. What seas, master? Wait, what seas? We go wherever our exploration and the Spanish ships lead us. Wherever they lead Wherever! Like at that better, Sarah! Go there, Enough! Enough, I say! I am the general and you are my man. Henceforth, you will obey my commands without question. Or by the rule. I swear you'll regret it. Whoever you be. Where are you? Where are you?
Francis. Aye. The Magellan Straits, are they truly as treacherous as men say? Aye, Thomas, they are. Only one man has ever truly tamed them. Magellan himself. And that full 60 years ago. Then why do we go there? Why? Yes. Why risk our money and our lives on a venture which may very well founder when there are rich pickings to be had in the north for the asking? Once we have passed Magellan Straits, we will be among the treasure fleets of Peru, where no English ship has ever been. A wolf in the sheepfold, Thomas. What's up in the north is but baubles to what we'll find here in the south. But the seas there are known to us. There are charts and directions. Magellan went south without any charts or directions. Then he was fortunate. He was bold. And a man. Where Magellan goes, there I go. But Francis, this is folly. We venture into regions which even the Spanish are afeard of. Which is why we go there, Thomas. There'll be none there to deny us. They're all too afraid. Perhaps they have reason to be. We shall find out for ourselves when we get there. If ever we do. I shall get there. But France... We go south. As agreed. But south! But you'll keep our true course to yourself. I would that none but us know where we truly go till the time is right to tell them. Great South Sea. To sure? Yes. But how do we get there? Through the Magellan Straits. This frail craft. It is madness. Our captain, General, is determined. And can't you persuade him otherwise? It will mean our deaths for sure. I need support. Men to back me up. The whole fleet will back you up once they know the truth. You know who I am, sir. You're in charge of the soldiers? Not only the soldiers. This voyage, it pleases you not any longer. I signed an agreement for Alexandria. So did you all. Aye, so did we all. Are there others who are as bitter as you? If such be the case, and I fancy that it is, tell them to come to me. This is a matter which must soon be resolved. But you're with the general, under his command. It is not so. I am responsible for this voyage, not Drake. If you and your shipmates have any important matters to discuss, such as knowing where it is he proposes to take you, you know where to find me. What is it? The mariners are very restless, Uncle. They're setting forth wild rumors about where it is we go. Aye. They say we go to the Great South Seas by way of Magellan Strait. Do they? Aye. Is it so? Perhaps. In this ship? Magellan conquered them both in a ship such as this lad. So too shall Drake. And unlike the Portugal, I intend to return. They'll like it not, Uncle, the man. 
as soon as they find out... They, they will to... do just as your uncle commands. That or say farewell to life. God's wounds, lad. I... Leave us, lad. I'll call for you when we are finished. Well, Ned. This Ned Bright. He was the one whose evidence convicted Doughty of mutiny, was he not? Aye, ma'am. The only one to give such evidence, I believe. Aye, ma'am. Fortunate for you he was so loyal to your cause. Fortunate for him that you rewarded that loyalty so generously. You did make him master of one of your ships, did you not, after the trial was over? A small ship, ma'am. Ship's carpenter to ship's master. You must have valued his seamanship highly. I did. He was a good mariner. Not good enough to survive, it would seem. The ship went down with all hands, did she not? Any ship would have sunk in a tempest like that, ma'am. Yours didn't. God was kind. Kinder, perhaps, than you realize. However, you kept bearing south. And on the 31st day of January, 1578, when approaching one of the islands off Cape Verde, you kept bearing south. And on the 31st day of January, 1578, when approaching one of the islands off Cape Verde, Portuguese merchantman, Your Majesty, carrying timber to the Cape Verde Islands. She was lightly armed and struck her colors without a fight. This is she? Hi, ma'am. John, my nephew, drew her. You quarreled here with Doughty, did you not? Hi, ma'am, I did. And would so again with a cause even half what it was. Senor, rendemono. Master Bright, conduct the captain of the prize to my cabin. Make sure he hath all that he needs. Aye, aye, sir. Master Brewer. General. See to it that the prisoners are well bestowed below deck. Leave him be, sir! It's a personal possession! Leave him be! Serve thee right, sir. These men are outnumbered and unarmed. Any man who molests them or tries to steal their personal possessions will answer to me. Get me below, you thieving knave. I'll deal with you later myself. Are they deaf, these soldiers of yours? Or blockheads or scoundrels or what? They'd better mend their ways directly, I tell you. For the next time my orders are disobeyed, it won't be my fist I shall use to correct the offender. God help him, it won't. Off they go, John. 
you take the prize. I myself took a much more valuable prize than I gave over to Doughty. Nuno de Silva, the prize ship's captain. A Portugal who was indeed a most excellent pilot. As I know the creeks and the coves of Devon and Cornwall, so he knew the waters that lead to the south. Like many of his countrymen, he was sea shrewd and skilled. I liked him. He was a most modest man, wise and with much dignity. I knew he would be of much help to us in the great task that lay ahead. The 29th day of March, 1578. We would be calm then. I remember it well. ship and he disappears. No sign of the prize ship. No, General. She had most of our water and victuals aboard. Provisions we had very much need of. No sign, Master. It is most strange. Most strange indeed. Think you, Master Doughty, a sorcerer? Claims to be. Aye. Wherever he goes now, calamity always attends. I would to God I... Bestir yourselves! Let's have some honest toil! Can one ship catch the wind and not another? Why, Dowdy's are not mine. There's witchcraft in it, John. Therefore commit his body unto the deep, to be turned into corruption, looking for the resurrection of the body, when the sea shall give up her dead, and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. Doughty, I await him in my cabin, not at his leisure. We drifted apart, truly, Francis. There was a breeze where we lay, and it carried us away. Fair 
was no breeze. There's witchcraft in it, John. He questions my authority too much. And with that polished lawyer's tongue of his, he causes discontent wherever he goes. My own command is threatened. And with it, the whole enterprise. But why? He likes it not, I think, to have to keep time to another's beat. Aye, that's the cause, I doubt not. Why, Ned? You are not ill. No, sir. Methought that tongue of yours had worn you out. You use it over much, Syrah, and to the wrong end. Rest it well, you hear me. You are well, Master Pasco? Aye, sir. You sure? Aye, sir. You would do well to wear a charm against the ague. It is most potent in these regions, and as you know, we have neither potions nor surgeon aboard, but I can help you. Take it. You need no longer be in fear for your health. How like you the prospect of the great South Sea, or us going through the Straits of Magellan? Was that, that where we go, sir? Drake did not tell you? Oh, sir. Where Magellan went, that is where Drake means to follow. And to what? Monsters, whirlpools, headless men and currents that run in only one direction, tornadoes that smash even the stoutest ships to driftwood while there are rich prizes to the north, there for the taking. These are dangerous seas, John. And not just from fear of tempest. Not far from here, Magellan had his mutiny. The crew had their mutterings, but there's no talk of mutiny. The storm builds. Tis the right place, the right time to buy and sell a voyage. Day of April, 1578, we crossed the Devil's Sea and reached the coast of Brazil. For which relief the men were doubtless greatly pleased. They were indeed, ma'am, and much refreshed themselves. They had need to, for all too soon we turned south to where Magellan ventured. Seventeenth day of May, 1578. The grievous storms which beset us since we make our course south along the coast of Brazil continue to plague us. I find it my duty to diminish our fleet. The sickness has taken too many of our men already. What do you speak, Master Dowdy? The mariners have matters they would discuss with me. With you? Yes, with me. What do you speak? Come, Sarah, tell me, or by God's wounds. They tell me they would rather go north to seek treasure than south into tempest. I speak to the man! And I speak for them. 
Bend thy knee, Master Tauri. Only to the Queen. Then bend to her warrant. You have not the Queen's warrant. By my oath, you tempt me. Your words are a mutiny. Words? Why, Francis, the worst word that ever came out of my mouth is to be believed sooner than three oaths of thine. Bind him to the mast! You shall suffer for this! By my oath, you shall suffer! You shall have need of me in England! Great need! You speak of the Queen! I shall do more than speak of her! I shall... You hear me, sirrah? You are a usurper, Master Drake! A usurper! And no gentleman either, but a ship's boy out of the Medway! I warn you, when I return... This fellow here is a sorcerer, a seditious and mutinous knave who would poison the credit of all the angels in heaven. None shall speak with him, nor shall they come to his aid, whatever the weather may chance. You are hauling these men to their graves. You are taking them to regions of which you know nothing and from which even Magellan failed to return. You are doomed, my masters. You hear me? Doomed! A sea ignorant landsman and lawyer. He knows not. Not. Now get thee about thy tasks, go to. ship's boy out of the medway. It is true, of course. The papers burnt my father's house and chased us out of Devon. He's not the first to style me thus. Go to my face, he is, I'll give him that. Get Ned and Brewer to release him. Put him up for it under guard. Would not have him die. At least not yet. And not without a trial. Because of these eternal storms and the damage they cause, it will be necessary to reduce the fleet still further to three ships. The Pelican, the Elizabeth, and the Marigold. This I shall do when we come into Port St. Julian. Port St. Julian. Ima, where Magellan rested his men before entering the Straits to the Great South Sea. And where he also settled accounts with those who would have undermined his command. Ima. He too believed in setting an example, did he not? He did indeed, ma'am. When one of his mutinous captains was killed, he had the body taken ashore and laid beside the chopping block, while another of his captains was publicly beheaded. The corpses of these two captains, both gentle-born and highly connected, were then ritually disemboweled, cut into four pieces, and the quarters hung up on gibbets as an object lesson to the defeated mutineers that Magellan alone was master. If there was to be a reckoning before passing through the straits, Port St. Julian is where it should be made. It's a commander's last chance, as Magellan well knew. You too, good Master Drake. Aye, ma'am. What means Port St. Julian to thee, John? Place of death, where Magellan executed his mutinous captains. And every man in this fleet knows it. 
Magellan knew that a divided command can kill a voyage as surely as a Southern Ocean tornado. Magellan's man, General? Aye. But part of his captains you have there. Now this would be the gibbet where he hang their quarters? Aye, that would be it. Well, can we take him, General? Making our own? Wherefore? Hey, still make out some souvenirs to sell to the men. This too, General? Aye, uh, take them. Take them all. <laughs> I doubt it, but hang he did. And not only that, as you will know. Barbarous end, Uncle. Aye, but a triumphant passage through the straits and no more mutiny. There is but one course. I shall impanel a jury from all the ships. And Doughty will be tried here on shore. He's a powerful man, you said, Uncle, with many good friends at court. So? What if he's found not guilty? Bring that bright to me. Here, Uncle. Aye, and let no one know what you do. Assembled. We are, General. The jury, all impaneled and ready. Then let us begin. Thomas Doughty, it is here alleged and attested that you have sought by divers' means as much as you may to discredit me to the great hindrance and overthrow of this voyage. Besides other great matters wherewith I do charge you. The which, if you can clear yourself, you and I shall remain very good friends. Where, to the contrary, you deserve to die. Say now by whom you will be charged. My good general, let me live to return to my country and there be tried by Her Majesty's laws. Hey, Thomas Doughty, you'll be tried here and now and by the jury beside you assembled. I hope your commission be good. Good enough. Then let us see it. Let us all see your commission from the Queen. No. Why not, Master Drake? If you do have a commission, why not show it to us? I, for one, will abide by its seal. You shall not see it. But, good General... No! You see how full of prating this... Scheming landsman is, good masters. A lawyer and a liar. A sorcerer and a knave. I am the coward. A fear of the sea. Find him, I say. Tyson. General, this is most improper, surely. I shall determine the proprieties here. But General, to your place. Now, oh. let the trial begin. Tom Brewer. I swear by Almighty God that I shall tell the truth, the old truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Master Thomas Doughty did say to me that whosoever should speak against him, whatever his rank or station, would be dealt with by him when we return to England. 
Colas, Coggin, lying knaves, and that his gentlemen should not be made to work along with such. They shall not pull no oar, nor do any such menial tasks, he said. He also did say that whosoever should disregard what the said Thomas Doughty would require of him, would, whatever his rank or station, be brought to account for it when we did return to England. Sir Thomas Doughty did then say as he had higher friends at court than our Captain General Drake, and, as others here present will so attest, anyone who would not submit to his commands would, when us returned to England, be dealt with most condingly. He told me, and others who will so attest, that he was co-equal with Captain General Drake. As said Thomas Doughty did then say, as he was co-equal with our Captain General Drake, to say to me and others here present who shall so attest, that the venture south was an act of madness. He did see to discredit our mariners as bad and envious people, and said as in agreeing to stale south, they was mad and foolish too. <laughs> if there is no better evidence than the gossip and hearsay that we have all been obliged to give ear to, let us abandon proceedings forthwith and return to our ships and warm food. Aye, master. There is nothing here to indict me, good Master Drake. And though you are clearly no lawyer, even you must very well know that. Nay, Doughty. I pray you, Ned Wright, charge me with nothing but the truth, and spare me not. I swear by Almighty God that I shall tell the truth, the old truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thomas Doughty came to me first in our general's garden in Plymouth. He told me that our present voyage had been planned not by our general alone, but by Thomas Doughty himself. Is that mutiny, Ned? On the Pelican, he came to me and said that he would make me one of the richest men alive if I would take my orders from him. He said he was sorry he had not taken command of the voyage himself. And uh, without our general... Lies! ...that whatever trouble he might cause could be mended when we reached home. He said that the old Queen's council could be corrupted. Yea, even the Queen herself. How could such familiarity exist between a gentleman and a ship's carpenter? Did you have no conversation with Ned then, Thomas? Well... Did you or did you not? I may have said that if we brought home gold, we would be the better welcome. So you did speak with them, and about gold? I spoke with many people. Of such matters as you spoke with Ned Bright? Yes. Such as who? Such as my Lord Burley. My Lord Burley? Yes. And he knows the true purpose of this voyage. He does not. Tis a secret from him. He has the plot of this voyage. He has not. I tell you, he has. How? He had it from me. Oh, my masters. What this fellow hath done. Her Majesty gave me special commandment that of all men, Lord Burley should not know of this voyage. Yet this fellow here has admitted it was to Burley he gave our plan. Out of his own mouth has this treachery confessed. So, my masters, what is your verdict? Show us your commission, Francis, or let me answer my accusers in England. You have heard his confession, my masters. What is your verdict? General, we do not think it means that we should decide upon his life. You do not have to decide on his life. Let me along with that. 
You say whether he be guilty or not. That is all I charge you with. There is, I trust, no question of death. I say, let me along with that. All I want from you is your verdict. Now. Masters! My masters! You have seen how this fellow tried to take away my good name, to discredit me whenever he could, and to overthrow this great voyage on which we are embarked. Consider this voyage, my masters. The like was never made out of England, never. By it, the very least of you will become a gentleman and live without care for the rest of his days. But if it do not go forward, then I cannot see how it could if this man should live. What a reproach it would be, not only to your purse, but to our country and our queen. For look you, masters, I do have her commission. Here, the authority of Her Majesty herself vested in me, Francis Drake, Captain General of her fleet. So, you have found Thomas Doughty guilty of mutiny. Therefore, my masters, those who think he should live, hold down their hands. But those who think he should die, let them, like me, hold up their hands and show it. Could not set me down on the coast of Peru and let me shift for myself. The Spaniards hereabouts have very large ears and an armada of ships to serve them. No, Thomas. It has to be death. And I pray you, let me die like a gentleman. That I shall do most readily. There will be no gibbet, Thomas, that I promise. I beseech you, General, let Doughty live. Punish him by all means, but spare him his life. Would you take him into your custody aboard the Elizabeth? Gladly, General. And pledge that he in no way does harm to you or your cause. Master Winter, so it shall be. I'll not take the life of a man who hath a ship for a haven and friends and supporters to protect him from death. But mark this well. Any ship that do this must nail him close under its hatches and return to Plymouth forthwith. Why so, General? I cannot have Thomas Doughty being left alive in waters like these. Should a Spaniard come near and Doughty be taken, then we and our venture are doomed. Oh, you take him aboard and you take him to England. And this I warn you, that man you shelter, Doughty here, he and whatever you wear or have in your sea chests 
That will be all you will take back to Plymouth. The treasures of the South we'll keep to ourselves. No! no, 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 no. We go on then? Aye, aye. All of us? Aye. The sentence shall stand. You have one day to prepare for death and put your affairs in order. God be with you. final absolution and communicating the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. Do you again deny on your salvation and on this the day of your death that you are guilty of those accusations made against you by Ned Bright for which you are being put to death? In the name of the God whom I hope to see later this day and into whose hands my soul shall be delivered for final judgment. I do solemnly affirm and upon my salvation that I am totally innocent of the charges for which I am being put to death. So help me God. Francis. Aye. Would you take communion with me? Is that what you wish? It is. Then I shall. Most gladly and humbly. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Aye, they were good times, Francis. Would that we could know them again. How would you die, Thomas? By me with a firearm or by the executioner's axe? Wouldst kill me thyself, Francis? If that be thy wish, yes, I would. But it would give you no pleasure. By God's own truth, Thomas, no pleasure at all. Thank you, good captain, but not by your hand. By the axe, if you will. So be it. You still intend to go through Magellan? And when you are done, return by the Straits of Anian, the Northwest Passage that Frobisher seeks. Aye. If there be one. You will be famous then. Aye. But you go to a better place.
Good masters, I wish you each and all success, prosperity, and peace. Remember me, please, in your prayers. God be with you now and always. Farewell, good captain. Our course is round. God be with you, too. Now and always. Clean and with care, for I have a short neck. is an end to all traitors! Are all now assembled? Aye, General, all. My masters! First, I must tell you that my ship, the Pelican, will henceforth be called the Golden Hind. I rename her for my great friend and patron, Her Majesty's most esteemed counselor, Sir Christopher Hatton. The hind that he hath in his crest may not be of gold, but the ship that I name for him will soon redress that. For the Indies are waiting and her hatches be wide. <laughs> now, masters, I am no speaker, no orator, no silver-tongued spinner of words, but a mariner, simple and plain. Yet what I now have to say, let every man take very good notice of, for I will answer to it in England. Yea, and before Her Majesty, we are few very far from our country and friends, compassed in on all sides by our enemies. Therefore, we must have these mutinies that are grown up amongst us put down, for it takes my wits from me to think on it. There be such controversy between the sailors and the gentlemen that I would have gentlemen haul and draw with the mariners, and the mariners with the gentlemen. So come, good masters. Let's show ourselves to be of a company, and not give our enemies rejoicing at our decay. But if there be any who would not set his hand to a rope, or work and haul with the rest, then let them return home today. I will give them the marigold, 
A ship I can well spare. And furnish them well for the journey. But let them take heed that they go homeward. For if I should find them in my way, I shall surely sink them. That I most solemnly pledge. So, masters, do you try and slink home in the marigold? Or stay with me and win treasure? With you, Captain! With you, General! And I herewith discharge every officer in the fleet of all his authority forthwith. Why so, General? Why not, Master Winter? But why? why? Silence! Why? I am the source of all authority here. I may confer it, and then I may take it away. I tell you that so that you may now know the truth of this voyage. So mark me well as I speak. The truth, good masters, is that Her Majesty's secretary, Lord Walsingham, asked me, your general, and on her behalf, where I thought the King of Spain might most be annoyed. This voyage is the result thereof. Moreover, the Queen herself was invested in us. Here is her bill for a thousand crowns. And she will have good return on it. Aye! 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 The voyage then goes forward. Let us not be a scoffing stock and great blot to our country. This voyage will set by the ears the kings of Spain and Portugal, and bring honor, profit, and glory to our queen, our country, and ourselves. And I herewith restore to all our officers and captains the authority I lately withdrew. Henceforth, they shall be as they were, your commanders and masters. Save only for me. So let all men be as friends. For soon we go to the great unknown, the Straits of Magellan and beyond. Let us do it as friends! Was Francis Drake or Thomas Doughty, man? Success or shame? The choice was made, and as Captain General, I defend it still. So be it. You have my full protection. Majesty. And then the Straits of Magellan. I ma. The Straits of Magellan. On the 23rd day of August, 1578, we entered the Straits. More than 330 nautical miles of unspeakable hazards. So tortuously channeled you could sail for a thousand leagues and still not find your way to the great southern sea. Magellan made his way through the Straits in 37 days, did he not? You took only 16. I was most fortunate, ma'am. You were indeed. This Portugal captain from the prize ship, he was of use to you there? He was, ma'am. Indeed, without him, I know not how things might have gone. The straits were hard, ma'am. The worst lane wait for us still. Outside struck from the day we went through. The 
Marigold has sunk. Marigold. The watch heard the cry of the crew as she went, even above the scream of the storm. Ned Bright was with him. Him you made captain. Well, General, that captain has gone now, and with him all of his crew. It is God's justice. You should not have killed Thomas Doughty. God save us all. He is still with us and seeking revenge. Eighth of October, fifteen seventy eight. The Elizabeth, under Vice Admiral Winter, has disappeared in a terrible tempest. Five ships we had from Plymouth, we have now but one, ours. This unspeakable storm has continued for more than 46 days and still shows no signs of abating. Where we are, I know not, but we have been unable to take sights. And whether we are driven, except to the south, where, according to the cosmographers, there is not supposed to be any ocean. I know not either. God be with us. Now and always. Dead? No, I... Executed by Drake. Executed? Wherefore? Mutiny. Alleged. And the gold? No gold. There were no treasure ships. And Drake? We lost him in a tempest that all but destroyed us. It was then we decided to return. So he too has perished, you think, Drake? I fear so. Where the marigold lies, somewhere nearby, will be Drake. thank God, are no longer empty of that which we came for. There is already there enough to make even the least of us passing rich. So spirits are high. But the most wondrous prize of all eludes me still. The Nuestra Senora de la Concepcion. A fabulous treasure ship, loaded to the gunnels with silver and gold and bound for Panama. Fifteen days ago, I first had intelligence of this lush prize. And within the hour, all sails set, I went off in pursuit of her. Find her I must. Was she all you'd heard she was? All and many times more, Your Majesty. My men were exhausted from Porteridge alone when they finally emptied her holes. But it was exhaustion so sweet they would sooner have died than abandon their labors. Twenty-six tons of uncoined silver. Thirteen caskets filled with royals of eight. Bars of gold, emeralds, jewels. Nearly half a million pesos worth. <laughs> and all from one ship. 
Aye, and there were others came after ma'am, also heavy laden, till came the day the hind could hold no more, and was time to think of home. Home? And how to get there? Aye, how? Oh. John D. tells me there is a passage from west to east, the Straits of Anian, where a ship can pass from the Pacific to the Atlantic Sea, though no man has ever seen them. We cannot return to Fire McGavin or the wider passage to the south, which we did find and none others know of. For the Spaniards will be waiting with every ship they can muster. So, it has to be north, which means Cross staff, I come for my cross staff. <coughs> no. Go, no, no. Master. Go. On deck, get thee on deck, go! For sure. For sure? Aye. We send him ashore. We leave the Portugal here in Mexico? Aye. Well, it was of us. How do we return to England without him? I need no Portugal to get us home. Aye, Francis Drake will do that. Alone. No, Master, no! Put him ashore with the other prisoners. No, please! I beg! When the Spaniards take me, they will torture me! Take him aboard. Por Deus! His chest is aboard. Aye. is a goodly pilot, but I cannot permit him to see the Straits of Anian. England hath need of them, not Portugal. think so. I know so, ma'am. There are no Straits of Anian, whatever John Dee may say. And so you made your way home by sailing west, round the whole globe. Aye, ma'am. It was a long voyage home, and to sight Ramehead again was a moment I will not forget. Wast ever in danger again? Aye, ma'am, we were. Indeed, we met the greatest hazard of all on the ninth day of this, our present year. An underwater mountain rising from the depths in the Celebes. We struck it square and lodged tight inside a ledge which formed its summit. How long stayed you there? Twenty hours. Twenty nightmare hours in which Chaplain Fletcher, scarce ever off his knees, lamented our misfortune and saw in it the will of God that I had taken treasure of the Spanish. I threw cannon and stores overboard to lighten the ship, Your Majesty, but the treasure I would not abandon. To return empty-handed... Would have meant a death as certain as drowning. How came you free? 
No thanks to our chaplain's prayers and lamentations, ma'am, but to much sweat and a change of wind. No sooner had he called God's curse upon me than the wind backed and we floated free. An inauspicious moment for a man of prayer. T'was so, ma'am. Indeed, I took it as a sign against him and told him that he was a perjured priest who would preach no more aboard my ship. I uh, shut him in a pen on the foredeck. <laughs> and the crew, did they not take it amiss to treat their chaplain, sir? He could not navigate, Your Majesty. <laughs> a tiny portion of your new possessions, ma'am. Soil from a land I call Nova Albion in the Americas. I claimed her on your behalf, leaving a brass plate to signify our possession. Where is this Nova Albion? What sort of land? A goodly country man with fruitful soil and friendly natives, and stored with many blessings for the use of man. That may one day be of use to us. My Lord Burley would have the treasure confined to the tower and then return to Spain. And King Philip, as I told you, has asked me for your head. Lord Burley must content himself with naught at all, I fear. The treasure stays with us, all of it. And as for Philip in your own good neck, well, I will at least supply a sword for it, though not perhaps the sword that Philip had in mind. So until the pelican, now golden hind, lies safely in the Thames, good master Drake awaits your monarch's sword. King has asked us for the head of Francis Drake. Here is the gilded sword with which to strike it off. But not in fear await its touch, good Master Drake. For here in England we approve our heroes, not cut them down. But not to upset our Spanish cousin, we shall ask the French ambassador to be the headsman. Arise, Sir Francis Drake. <laughs> 